Hey, welcome back to the Junkies. I'm your host, Craig Majeski, your personal weatherman here, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype here on your Friday, December 27th, 2024. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we're tracking here for today as we're looking at a weekend round of severe weather. Looks like a pretty active weather day across the deep south as we go throughout the day on Saturday and going into Sunday. We'll show you the specifics on that here in a second. We're going to talk about a mild stretch that will be wrapping up 2024, but it looks like it's going to be turning much colder as we go into January. And that January cold uncertainty is in the form of what kind of winter precipitation are we going to see? Because the models have been kind of all over the map here. We're going to be one of those things we're going to have to watch daily as we go deeper into the month. Now, before we get going, first, I want to thank all the new subscribers here to the channel. And if you haven't yet subscribed yet, uh, please help this growing channel out. I could use your support. Please hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And as always, please leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up as it does help with the YouTube algorithm. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our latest satellite imagery here as we're Fairly quiet up along the eastern seaboard. We have some rains across Tennessee this morning, back into portions of Alabama. It was a pretty rough day yesterday across portions of Louisiana, but things have settled down there briefly for the moment. We're waiting for some more energy to kind of kick out here of the southwest, which is where we're going to see another round here fire up here uh, as we go into late tomorrow afternoon. Still looking at some uh, weather here and along the west coast here across portions of Washington State, stretching backward into Nevada and Utah, and there's still some more energy coming in, so some more heavy rains expected in the days ahead out there on the west coast. Boy, you know it's mild across the country. You see a map like this. Look at all the fog out here in the middle of the country. All the cold air is kind of evacuated out, except for a couple of pockets up there into the northeast. We do have some winter weather in higher elevations here, thus the purple and the pink out here across Idaho and Utah. Uh, but when you see something like that, you know it's very mild here in the middle of the country. But don't worry, we do have cold air that's going to be arriving as we welcome in the new year for 2025. Looking at our morning surface map again, here's those rains here uh, stretching into portions of Kentucky down through portions of Tennessee. They get some snows out here across portions of Idaho into Oregon and getting into northern Nevada as well. But relatively mild for most of the country except for the northeast. Look at there's a minus 9, a minus 20. There's the Arctic air just holding on up there into the northeast. But for the most part, most of the country seeing temperatures well above where they're supposed to be as we're wrapping up the month of December. Let's go ahead a little bit closer here. We'll take a look at some of this heavy rain here uh, uh, just south of the Nashville area coming into Nashville down toward Met, uh, Mount Pleasant and to Lawrenceburg. Getting some pretty good heavy downpours there for our friends there in the Tennessee River Valley folks there. And it looks like this will continue to move on there. This is the first round of rain coming our way. We got a few more coming your way in the days ahead. But let's talk more specifically about that severe weather outlook that we're expecting here. We're gonna, talk, we're gonna break this down, really focusing on day one and day two, okay? So here we go. This is our day one outlook here as we got that pocket there of severe weather. Uh, not that bad. We're talking about a marginal risk here. So we're talking about here across portions of Alabama, Mississippi, right along the Gulf Coast here. Uh, again, just seeing a little pocket of, of some marginal severe weather where it really gets active is going to be for tomorrow. So today's really just kind of maybe some strong gusty winds, some heavy rains, that kind of thing. Tomorrow is the main concern. That'll also be the main concern for the tornado threat as well. So let's talk about day two. We do have a pretty good enhanced area. A little unusual to see at the end of December. Looks like something you see more toward the springtime, obviously. But you see that, that little bullseye there across Louisiana, Mississippi, portions of Alabama. That's getting into that enhanced area. Uh, for severe weather. So let's go ahead and break this down by the category. We got a pretty decent uh, chance of seeing some tornado, uh, tornado outbreak in this zone. Let's look at the percentages here as we're talking upwards of about 10% there in that yellow zone. That's our bullseye here uh, for tomorrow in that enhanced area. So if you're in that area, uh, make sure that you're weather aware. We're talking about heading into late afternoon tomorrow going into Sunday night. So it's going to be a late Saturday into Sunday morning type of event as this is going to be pushing off toward the east. Uh, there will be some po possibility for some hail in this. There's that hail bullseye there running about 15% there in the yellow uh, running through there. So uh, again, we've seen some hair, but the damaging winds will also be running pretty high as well. Uh, that'll be running upwards of about 30% in that red bullseye, basically right in that enhanced area for tomorrow. So make sure that you stay up on the latest on this. Make sure you have the latest uh, weather app on your phones and you got their weather radios ready to go as we've got uh, kind of a little unusual, almost spring-like type system that's going to be bringing us the rough weather in here uh, for tomorrow. We're going to break that down by the models here in just a second. Now, along with that, we do have some heavy rain risk with this as well. Uh, a couple of places we'll be watching this, the heavy rain risk for flooding. That's going to be obviously here in the east and in the west. we got a little pocket here for today on your day one outlook here. 
air across portions of the southeast and obviously out here on the west coast as well and those zones really not going to change that much so as they take you through the day two here you see a bigger pocket there across the southeast obviously with that uh heavy thunderstorm threat there we're going to see that and we've got a moderate risk out here on the west coast there across oregon and california that's that other system i just showed you there that was just off the coast there and then our day three outlook well that'll begin to move up into the northeast as that system pushes off toward the east here across uh, new england stretching back into portions of virginia and north carolina and we're still staying active out here on the west coast as well with that next storm system just showing that little small moderate area for possible flooding in that zone as well now looking at our hazard outlook here for the next uh, three to seven days a uh, little bit of pockets and maybe some icing up here across new england uh, especially that warm air kind of overthrowing across with that uh, warmer air uh, coming over the top of that cold air at the surface some heavy rains here a bit breezy out here in the plains and of course the heavy precipitation threat obviously uh, that's going to stay in place here over the next three to seven days so we want to talk about the the how this is going to look down as far as the model so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, high resolution model here this is our short range model we're going to go about 40 hours go up to about midnight on your saturday so uh, obviously what we're looking at initially here is we got this range here across the south we got the mountain snows out there wanting a pretty good what we just showed you there on the current map right there so let's go ahead and take this into the future here as we're going to see the get several rounds of rain across the south so a few of these storms in alabama here as we showed with that marginal risk of for severe weather yeah you might get a little bit something down in, in this, this zone here so just something to watch uh, again some strong gusty winds will be the main concern there uh, for later this afternoon and of course the heavy rains coming in on the west coast as well it'll be heading into tomorrow as we watch this next piece of energy that's going to be kind of ejecting on out of texas that's going to fire up the storms around into louisiana and push into mississippi as we go into later in the afternoon on your saturday that's when we're going to get our max daytime heating and we see those thunderstorms begin to erupt we got a couple of rounds of it you notice we got, uh, got a little line here we got a little line back here that we're going to be watching as this pushes off toward the east so uh that'll be the main concern there uh going late into saturday afternoon so this is around six o'clock so it's like we got waves of different rains in here uh, as this system is pushing off toward the east and eventually into the northeast so uh pretty good heavy rains across north georgia there coming across northern alabama but as it comes into the evening hours it looks like this is going to be a nighttime event there uh, as we go with Louisiana and into Mississippi. This is where we'll be watching for the potential for those tornadoes to be in here. Uh, possibly getting, I would say, looking at the wind dynamics, maybe getting up to F2, F3 range. It's, it's definitely feasible there. And this, this pushes off toward the east. Now, the good news is as this thing begins to push further off toward the east, uh, it is coming into the overnight hours. We're not doing this during max daytime heating here. Uh, so the trend should be as this thing moves like into, say, Georgia heading into the morning hours on Sunday, that they should begin to weaken just a little bit. Still going to be marginal on the severe weather risk there uh, going into Sunday. But uh, again, just something that's going to be going throughout the overnight period, Saturday evening into Sunday morning. So please stay weather aware if you're in that part of the country. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the jet stream here. Again, that's what's driving the system here is. Here's this system right here. It's this little bulk of the jet stream right here. This is it right here that's causing our problem, okay? Uh, not a tremendous, we got what you call difluence. So the air is kind of separating in there. So we got spin there. We got a little wind shear that's going on with that system as that pushes off toward the east. Also a little bit of a net, what we call a negative tilt. This is tilting backward here as it comes into Sunday morning. So that adds additional wind shear, additional spin to the atmosphere uh, as that begins to push on through. So this system will move on through. And then as we head closer and closer toward the first, that's when we're gonna to start to see uh, things begin to change with the overall weather pattern going in toward January 1st. That's when we're gonna get our first real kind of real push back down here of cold air. We see, you start seeing some ridging back out here in the west a little bit. Uh, we start seeing these pushes of cold air coming in here as we head toward January 1st. And it's gonna be coming at us in series of cold air, okay? So you get one shot that comes on through, then you get another shot back behind this. Here's a, a little friend, our polar vortex friend, sitting right up in here as we're gonna see these little waves of cold air that'll be coming down. One progressively colder after the other uh, as we go through this forecast period. So 
Uh, you talk about the second, the heading toward the sixth, heading toward the ninth. There'll be different waves. The timing will be off. Now, the one reason we're not getting any big storms is, is where this jet stream is sitting. If this thing was shifted a little bit further off toward the west here a little bit, if it was a little bit, then we'd be looking at the Gulf of Mexico for potential uh, low pressure development, maybe a nor'easter or something like that. But it's 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 offshore, so you're not going to get that. So that's one of the things we have to watch closely. If that jet shifts just a little bit, it can make all the difference in the world for any significant storming. It does hit something here at the end of the storm here. I'm seeing some, some sort of low here, printing off across northeast. That could be a pretty good uh, snowstorm there for the interior sections there across New England and into maybe the mid-Atlantic. Uh, but that's about it. So it doesn't look like we're in, we're in a pattern where, yes, we're cold, but we're not in one where we're going to get any potential storms to fire up uh, as a result. So let's go ahead and take you through this again as we're going to watch this initial rain here push through. This is the European model here. Uh, again, we'll be watching this zone uh, going into your uh, going into your Sunday. So that'll be going in and heading into the Carolinas and stuff. That will back off to more of a slight rest there as that moves on through. And then it slides up into the northeast. And then we'll see the just the overall pattern shift. And we got that initial cold air. Look, notice the 540 line. It's coming way back far south here again uh, after retreating out of the country here for the weekend. So we got some cold air coming on back in here again here as we go into the new work week here going into the, the going to the new year i should say the first and into the second and it's just plain old cold uh, just a lot of cold we'll get we'll definitely get the great lakes firing up here again with the lake effect snows that's definitely back into play again here uh as we go into late next week and then we'll just see a series of these little these impulses come through here's another little clipper system again uh going to the six and pretty good snows here across portions of michigan going into pennsylvania as that cold air dives down here toward the south once again of course, the Appalachians, as this goes on by, we'll get a little bit of orographic lifting. We'll get a little bit of snow, uh, possibly getting down into maybe extreme northeast Georgia, uh, going all the way up into portions of the, the northeast. Obviously, the interior of New England looks real heavy there with the heavy snow going in toward the 6th. And, of course, this is getting up beyond 10 days. So, so again, anything beyond 7 to 10 days, it is an extrapolation. It's just kind of a, we're looking at trends here. All right, so we're looking at that going on by, but it just stays plain old cold. This is the eighth. Look at it. It's freezing. It's still way on down here to the south. So we're looking at a, a fairly prolonged period of some cold air here across the eastern half of the United States. There's another a clipper system diving down south. This is the one that may spur a low pressure along the coastline there uh, going into the 9th and 10th. Of course, this is all way far out here. So, But it does fire up a pretty good storm there and some very heavy snows here across New England if this holds out true uh, this far out. Obviously, this is two weeks away, so... Uh, we'll see. But the overall trend is definitely cold. So looks like the first, I don't know, 12 days of the month looks pretty chilly. And then we'll see things begin to, I think, begin to moderate as we head toward the middle of the month. All right. We're looking at the K index. This is our thunderstorm index here. Once again, <clears throat> seeing it here uh, going into Friday and Saturday. This is the main wave here coming back in here, uh, coming in towards your Saturday and into Sunday. Uh, that'll be pushing on through. So you notice the south is looking pretty active there with the thunderstorms. Anything we see that this is basically a general thunderstorm threat. It doesn't really tell us exactly what the severe weather is going to be, but it looks like predominantly down here into the south, but the generally thunderstorm threat. But notice when the pattern changes here, this goes bye-bye. So you don't see any real big thunderstorm threat here all across the country uh, because the pattern turns much colder. So we get rid of the warm air, obviously you're going to say goodbye to the thunderstorm. So we have the thunderstorms through the weekend, and then we'll see things begin to improve uh, on that front as we head into next week. All right, let's look at the, the rainfall totals here. Here's our initial ones here for the next 72 hours. I'll take you out here to uh, 72 hours here so you can see what's going to happen here across the southeast, Midwest. A lot of heavy rains in here. Looks like North Georgia, portions of uh, South Carolina, North Carolina will be the heaviest rains. Heaviest rains out here on the West Coast as well for the first 72 hours. And then we'll take it out from three days. We'll take it out to 10 days. I don't like going beyond 10 days on, on a forecast when it comes to rainfall. We'll go right about there. Uh, and again, you see pretty decent coverage here across the eastern portion of the United States. Still staying abnormally dry across the southwest. That's been the trend here really for the last month or so. And still very heavy rains across the Pacific Northwest into Northern California. Southern California is still staying dry as well uh, for the most part here over the next 10 days. How about the snow, snow total? Uh, again, we're going to go out here for the first 72 hours to get here through the weekend, uh, predominantly out here in the west. So we're getting some pretty decent snows out here across Idaho, 
California, uh, heading into portions of western uh, Wyoming as well. Utah uh, getting some decent snows there, but not much there in the east. But once the pattern changes, obviously, once we get past the first, things begin to change here a little bit. So we'll turn that lake effect machine back on as we get past the first and second. Notice the snows here starting to creep back up here again across the Great Lakes once again as we head toward the first and into the second. And then we'll take this out to 240 once again, stop it here about 240, 10 days out here. We got the snows coming down here, obviously with those clipper systems coming down there with snows and uh, we'll be, uh, we'll get a little bit of a break out there toward the West, but we'll start to see the snowy conditions returning to the Eastern portion of the United States as we get past the new year. Uh, let's talk about the temperature anomalies here. This is the, this is the big deal here. Obviously we're still pretty warm here through the weekend. Uh, very warm here across portions of Canada, but we're going to tap some of this cold air up here. That's going to dive in around here uh, as the polar vortex is going to weaken a bit, shift on down to the south. And uh, because of the warming that went on in California, and that's warming at the surface and it's uh, stratospheric warming aloft that kind of weakens the polar jet stream, kind of allows the, the polar vortex kind of wobble a little bit, that semi-permanent low pressure system there uh, to kind of uh, drop on down. So we'll get that to come on down here uh, going in toward the first. So here's the, here's as you go toward the first here, we're kind of doing on this. Still kind of holding on to some mild air across eastern Canada, but that's not going to last very long. It's going to break on down here as we go past the first. So we're going to come at us in waves. So we got that one cold pull push through, a brief warm up. Here's another one coming through as we head toward the seventh. Uh, they're coming into the eastern half of the United States. And then we'll see yet another one come on down. This one, this the third one looks even colder. I mean, this is, they were talking temperatures here running 20, 30 degrees below normal there into the southeast as we head toward the 10th there. And then beyond that, looks like, uh, just judging by what I'm seeing upstream here, I think we get a little bit of a break maybe as we head toward the middle of the month right there. So uh, again, that's what the current long range projection is showing here uh, for the moment. So let's go ahead and take a look at the latest from the Climate Prediction Center here and see if this wraps up. This lines up pretty well with what we're seeing on the European model. So I don't think we're gonna see any big changes here. So from January 1st to the 5th, cold here across the Southeast, especially mild New England, mild in the, in the West here for the six to 10 day period. Doesn't change much here, eight to 14, the third to the ninth. So this looks cold here in the East. We're gonna stay milder out in the West. Now, as far as you snow, snow lovers out there, this don't look too good. I mean, you're you're basically below normal precipitation here from the from just about most of the country here. And the reason why where that jet stream's diving down, we can't get any low pressure cyclogenesis to form in the Gulf of Mexico and track up, you know, a typical nor'easter type situation. We just don't have it. The jet stream's in the wrong position to do that. So we're not going to see anything like that with this kind of cold northwest flow. It's going to chill things off and generally stays that way here from January 3rd through the 9th as well from New England back here toward the southwest. So uh, again, it's going to be pretty active here for the weekend. I probably will be looking to do uh, maybe some severe weather coverage here for tomorrow uh, here on the channel. So uh, expect on doing that sometime during the afternoon. And we'll, we'll see how long I want to go into the evening hours. We'll see how things develop there for that for potential tornado outbreak across the, the, the deep south for tomorrow. And then we got to watch that cold air. And, and the thing is, when it comes to this winter weather, forecasting it's going to be a bit of a nightmare with this one coming up it's just uh the consistency with the, with the models have not really been there we know we got the cold waves coming any deviation in that jet stream at all can really dictate big time where we're going to see uh any potential uh storm systems begin to develop right now it looks like it, it looks like it's favoring where it's uh, we're going to stay cold but no really super bad snowstorms except they're on the tail end of that model maybe up toward new england we'll have to watch closely but for the most part i don't really see any huge winter storms for the moment <laughs> always subject to change you know that is all right hey this is the latest update here again if you're new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed uh, please consider hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell so you learn on future content as always leave me a comment down below give me a thumbs up help me try to grow this channel as best we can as we move forward here into 2025 can't believe it's already here and uh, we're going to try to see if we can get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2025 that's at least that's the goal right <laughs> all right guys you guys take it easy you can stay safe and we'll see you in the next update bye guys <laughs>